Well, I think that was a sufficient intro. So let me just walk you through how I build this. And uh, this isn't the first time I'm doing this build. Uh, the last time I did was in Metamor, but it was way weaker. This one, like I mentioned in the intro, has over 4 million DPS, uh, 6k life, over like 2000 uh, life gain on a hit per second. So it can do all the content. And um, a couple of people were doing similar build or basically the same build but with more damage but with less life so maybe we're gonna share them in the comments below so do check that out if you want to see like 10 million dps skill rate build uh, galvanic arrow so the main idea was to lower my lighting grass and use the redness prototype and then the quill rain maximum attack well not let's let's say not maximum attack speed but a lot of attack speed and uh, try to squeeze in as much damage as possible uh, the way I'm countering the the, uh, the Rennes prototype is this time using Divine Flesh uh, and capping my Hears Resistance at 85. Sadly, I failed to get the Talisman with 50% uh, lighting damage taken as Fire or as Cold and just stuck with that. It wasn't that bad. Some of the lighting things can still be scary, but it was alright, especially once you get enough life. Now, the quickly just to mention this, this build is not too great for the clean speed because it does not have a lot of reach and uh, one of the reasons why Quill Raid is because it gets 100% increased projectile speed and projectile speed is very important for the Galvanic Arrow. It basically increases the cone uh, distance while AoE we kind of increases the cone spread. It, it's, it's a bit hard to explain uh, but increased projectile speed is way more important than increased AoE. So the clean speed is not too amazing and the build while leveling may feel weak and squishy until you get enough life and uh, I do have some mitigation like uh, as you can see I have crab aspect of the crab so for the first hit I'm taking actually I'm taking uh, less damage because of wind dancer and also uh, crab aspect uh, aspect of the crab reduces physical damage taken for the first hit and uh, if you can survive one shot you can heal back very fast with this life on hit in the end I decided to not use any thread of hopes but uh, you can definitely squeeze in a lot more damage like I said some people got even over 10 million bonus DPS but uh, like below 5k HP so you kind of you, you can you can adapt this build to your own liking you can get uh, more damage and less HP if you are comfortable with that or you can get even more uh, more life and maybe less damage because 4 million DPS is it's not really needed it just I mean more damage the better so the Rennes prototype I got the uh, life gear on hit ring, not a requirement, but I do also have life gear on hit, uh, feast of flesh, cluster jewel. Another ring is just uh, some whatever managed to craft aspect of the spider, just lighting, uh, lighting damage to attacks, elemental damage, uh, so opal ring works well. Could still make this better. And uh, when I was using thread of hope, I had to get a lot of fire and cold resistance everywhere I could. But once I dropped it, I do have quite a lot of overcap. Fire and cold rest. So, if you don't use uh, Thread of Hope, you can even get more damage because you don't need as much fire and cold rest, so it's gonna be cheaper to get it. I do have pretty good quiver, but it was actually pretty easy to craft it. I believe I crafted fire rest plus extra arrow, and then from there just use the harvest craft like to augment life, to augment uh, uh, cold rest, uh, then uh, lighting damage to attacks, and then crafted attack speed. So quiver extra arrow is very important. Extra arrows, uh, also that's why dying sun. Extra arrows kind of um, multiply your DPS a lot. For the helmet, I'm using crown of the inward eye. It actually gives a lot of damage, uh, and even without the uh, uh, enchantment, since you cannot really, cannot really lower enemy resistances, that's why I'm not using any exposure. Uh, and penetration also doesn't work because I am using uh, abhorrent interrogation gloves. Which are conditional, but the cool thing is I'm hitting over 100 times per second. Hitting, not attacking. I'm only attacking over 6 attacks per second, but each projectile produces cone. Without barrage, it just looks like that. You just shoot a bunch of projectiles and a cone. But once you add barrage support gem, you shoot projectiles in, in, in a sequence and each projectile produces its own cone. But when you look at PUB, you're gonna see that it shows 2 million DPS, but that's only for a cone. Each projectile also has the same amount, so you kind of have to multiply this DPS by, by 2 because you're doing arrow and cone. 
And in terms of uh, how many hits per second, you have to multiply attack rate times projectile count times two because cone plus projectile. So this is uh, this is how I'm achieving 100 uh, hits per second. Uh, this is by the way level 91. Uh, I actually went for the elemental overload uh, in the first part of my leveling. I was actually going uh, down here and 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 getting these notes a bit more projectile speed, but in the end. I just getting more way more damage by taking the metal overload now like I said these gloves require you to hit many times per second with this pretty low chance to apply wither but since I'm hitting 100 times per second it takes it takes less than a second to get uh, 15 wither stacks and these gloves give a lot of damage um, these are corrupted with plus one frenzy charge. It's actually not that expensive. I bought it for 50 hairs, I believe, but it can go for like 100 hairs. The al alternative that I was using before was Tom Fist. Uh, plus one Tom Fist. Uh, let's say let's add that. Uh, it's not as much damage, but for Tom Fist, you can also uh, use Intimidate. Uh, for, with Tom Fist, you would have more life. And I would recommend having Tom Fist for leveling because you would have more, more life. And it's just more pleasant to level with more life because if you keep dying it just it's just annoying i'm also using darkness and throne uh, because i was previously using the harbinger's belt the upgraded version harbinger's belt but the dps is is almost identical look at that it is a bit more but of, of course you are losing a lot of life and darkness and throne is just so good look at how much life i'm getting i'm getting 400 life and the damage is pretty similar of course, I'm losing like 400k DPS combined, but I don't mind getting that much life and, and um, you can get other cool things like uh, blind on hit or just if you're lacking attributes, you can get strength, uh, which I was lacking actually. I got Tailwind Boots, easy to, to get them. Uh, by the way, on the, on the jewels, just trying to get as much flat uh, damage to attacks uh, and uh, damage to buffs as, as, as possible. Uh, because most of the damage comes from Wrath, Herald of Thunder. Um, also, I have the Corrupted Kill Rain with the either Lightning Damage. Turns out that is a bit more damage, but you can also go for the extra um, Frenzy. Uh, was it Frenzy Charge or something? I, I can't remember, but uh, extra um, Flat Lightning Damage is great. Instead of Kill Rain, you would have almost identical damage with the Tempest Bomb. But you would be lacking mana on hit, and mana on hit is extremely important. You have to get it somewhere, and Cool Rain provides that. And you never run out of mana as long as you are hitting something. Uh, also, projectile speed is very, very important. Another buff that you could use if you want to go like, like full min max. There is a better buff, but I'm only gaining like one million combined DPS. But look at the buff; it has to be pretty insane. A lot of Flat lighting damage, attack speed, boss fire, two additional projectiles, projectile speed, 80% elemental damage, and plus one frenzy charge is actually from the um, fracture mod, which is not that expensive actually. You can get a ticket uh, both with fracture, the frenzy charge, and then craft from there. Um, but uh, yeah, you don't need it, and you would you would still lose projectile speed, which would feel bad. Yeah, I'm also using point blank uh, for that. You're gonna have to stand pretty close to targets, but uh, it's alright, you, you still want to kind of stand stand close enough to targets because the cone doesn't 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 reach very far, that's why the clear speed is not that great and you kind of have to work for the clear speed. There is a way to get the explosions things but you, you, you're gonna have to pay like 100, over exo 100 plus exhausts for the explode buff and then you would have to convert that physical into lighting because otherwise you can only deal lighting damage because you are using this body armor. Uh, and for the remaining flask, sulfur flask, granite, I'm not sure if it's worth using granite. I actually forgot to swap to another life flask when doing Cirrus. Um, but you may experiment and maybe go with the uh, dodge flask instead. But dying sun is also cheap and uh, try to get the one with the, without increased charges used. Now the amulet, the talisman. You may want to try to make your own talisman. Uh, you want avian twins, but uh, lighting damage from hits taken as fire or cold. I wasted 13 talismans, still did not get the right implicit talisman. 
uh, you would want that and then you would completely kind of mitigate the lighting damage uh, or at least mitigate the drawback of the body armor and you would be actually very tanky against lighting damage, lighting hits. But I thought Baran, Baran wasn't really an issue, I thought Eradicator, er Eradicator was a bit, a, bi a bit sketchy but it wasn't a big deal. There are a couple damage over time abilities that bosses do but you're rarely gonna encounter those. So lighting them shouldn't be uh, too big of an issue once you get enough your uh, hair's rest. By the way, um, you can you can just buy a pretty cheap uh, Avens Twin Talisman, but if you want a really good one, especially with the anointment, you're gonna have to make your own because you cannot anoint corrupted items. So you have to anoint it and then uh, use tier two Jorgen. Thanks to you. Uh, use tier two Jorgen in research. Uh, if you can place it in a um, leader position, you're gonna have two benches to to do the two uh, uh, amulets. And I, I kept failing a lot and a lot. This is this isn't even all the all the talismans I threw away. Couple I also had from before uh, when I was doing the Rennes Fist build. If you cannot get that talisman, don't worry. Just try to get cleansed forts. You can also uh, cap your hair's rest without the cleanse fort, and cleanse fort basically doubles your hair's resistance. It's not shown, uh, oh actually it is shown in here. Hair's resistance is doubled. You get that and you don't need to get as much hair's resistance. Without that I would have only 17 hair's rest. I put uh, this talisman on, 100 hair's rest. So it gives a lot. And then try to get hair's rest um, everywhere you can. You can also get hair's rest, you can cap hair's rest uh, from the cluster jewels, uh, like this one. Uh, this uh, each, each small cluster jewel will give you uh, 12 hair's rest, plus you can roll another hair's rest, uh, like this one, as a normal mod, not as implicit. So you can actually cap your hair's rest even without the cleanse forts. You could just try to get Avens uh, Twin Stalsman for like a 1 or 2x and, and just use that uh, without without torturing yourself and, and trying to make your own uh, now the links uh, you have to remember you cannot benefit from penetration if you're using these gloves and uh, you cannot lower enemy resistances because it's always gonna be equal to your lighting resistance by the way I'm only at minus 6 and uh, in PUB if you noticed this is at minus 10 that's because when you select against Cirrus, it's gonna add a 50 extra resistance. So this is by how much you would have to lower boss resistance to match them having minus 60 lighting res on a Cirrus. Uh, that's why it's uh, minus 110. Uh, Raider just gives a lot, a lot of speed um, and onslaught, more evasion. And speed in general is, is amazing with this. Uh, if you go with the crafted buff, you're gonna feel more sluggish and may not feel as great but you really don't need a crafted bow you can just use cool rain and the corrupted cool rains aren't even expensive now the main links in my galvanic arrow uh inspiration to lower the mana cost by the way uh, as you notice i do have non challenge skills have minus total mana cost this is pretty important but you could get it on one of the rings uh also need to make sure you have accuracy you don't really need aspect of the crab if you cannot get it, use uh, a precision instead, then you would not need to worry about getting uh, as much accuracy. By the way, this is non crit build, and if you use precision, you're gonna have easier time to proccing elemental overload. And with this kind of attack speed, it's not really an issue proccing elemental overload and having it uh, almost 100% of the time. Uh, so the links are Galvanic Arrow, Inspiration, Barrage Support Gem, Elemental Damage of Attacks, Elemental Focus, and added the uh, lighting damage uh, support if you can afford awakened gems obviously that would be much better i i could not really afford it so not needed but yeah uh, then what do i have i have a dash with second wind and uh, these are just for leveling and snaring arrow linked with uh, mirage archer course and hit and projectile weakness before you say i know that mirage archer cannot pro course and hit this is not really for that but this is also kind of not a perfect setup i would like to improve it but I'm, i don't really want to think too much about it works the thing is if it pierces it it just flies through enemy and does not stick on the ground near the enemy because ensnaring arrow gives you generic increased projectile damage from attack hits uh, f uh, for the ensnare the enemies and to ensnare enemies the projectile kind of has to stay close to enemies and if you pierce which you do get from projectile weakness 
the second hit from ensnaring arrow is, is not gonna ensnare the same target because it's gonna pierce through but it's not an issue the first hit will ensnare and will apply uh, projectile weakness so it's kind of like a, a, a damage boost uh, once the projectile weakness fades away you, you 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 can redo it again also knockback may be annoying so don't overuse it too much uh, next I got the Held of Thunder, Wrap, I still could not get the uh, Wrap at um, level 21. You could also add uh, Held of Thunder, Wrap and um, Empower. That would increase the mana cost, uh, mana reservation, so uh, as you can see I can, I, I barely have enough mana. You may want to even get uh, Sovereignty and, and maybe get some more mana reservation reduction elsewhere, then you could squeeze in a bit more damage. And I also have Casman Damage Taken, Immortal Call and Flesh Offering. The Flesh Offering is to destroy Porcupine Spikes basically. Because Porcupines are absolutely deadly to this build. The first, first hit would uh, hit me for little damage because I have mitigation for first hit. Then it would proc uh, Flesh Offering, it would destroy other corpses and would destroy spikes from Porcupines that are active. But Porcupines can be very scary. Now for Cluster Jewels. Supercharge is basically a must because this is non crit build and uh, you really want that supercharged. This is by the way not really efficient, this is a 9 passive pointer. You could uh, reduce it by 1. I'm not sure how it would shape it but uh, if you could get something else instead of Vengeful Commander that would be probably better. I didn't even take it because Vengeful Commander was not giving me enough to, to spend another 2 passive points. On a small cluster jewels, so you want 1 with live gain on hit. Uh, because I do have a ring with five gain on hit, but it didn't feel like it was enough, so I added another one. And also another one with the blessed, which gives hair stress and life, which is great. And you also do want uh, a mod with hair stress, so you take that, you get a bit of hair stress, you take that, you get even more hair stress. Obviously, I grab frenzy charges. I did not go for uh, for this frenzy charge in the end because it's not really that needed. Divine flesh goes in here. I'm actually getting. Chaos rest very conveniently from this one. I could also get a bit more dodge from this, but uh, I don't really want to take things that it would be hard to replicate because these are very random. It corrupts all the passives in the radius and, and changes the big uh, keystone into Divine Flesh. You have to get uh, Glorious Vanity with Xibakwa basically. And then Elemental Overload, more Chaos more rest very conveniently here. These points are the last points that I took. You can also go for these but these three are only slightly bit more damage than these two so yeah. As always I'm gonna include path of building import code you can uh, check all the build and copy it. Uh, for leveling I believe for leveling I do yeah for leveling I just kept using a lower level corrupted kill rain. I use this quiver all the way until like level 85. <laughs> uh, for leveling also you can use sacrificial heart gives a lot of damage. Uh, the Thief Stormman gives life and mana on a hit very useful. Free Grand Spectrum Jewels with elemental damage uh, per Grand Spectrum, that's like over 100 uh, combined early damage. Uh, Wake of Destruction gives flat damage. You basically want flat damage as much as possible because Cool Rain doesn't really give you and while leveling you don't really get as much damage. So you want to get as much flat damage on your items and everywhere you can. Once you reach level 68 or whatever is required for this body armor, you, you change most of the items and then you can kind of work your way towards min-maxing uh, the remaining items but uh, that's when you want to remove all the lighting resistance from, from all of your items and, 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 and have as, as, um, as negative lighting res as possible. If you can afford good Ventor's Gamble with negative lighting res and positive fire cold res and then a decent amount of life, great, do that. Uh, it should give you more damage. Anyway, I think that covers everything. I like I said, I will include path of building import code. The next build will probably be dark uh, dark pack with the uh, skeletons. Um, we'll see how that goes. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I will see you soon. Bye bye.